Today I'm going to show you how to put together a digital mandala. So we're going to start out by a 10 in, with a 10 inch by 10 inch document and it's 300 ppi so just go command N or file new and create a new document that has those dimensions. Then we're going to go ahead and put some guides in here and we're going to do that by going to view, new guide, and we're going to type in 50% vertical, okay. We're going to do that again, new guide, 50%, oops, 50 inches, let's try that again, new guide, 50% horizontal. Now I'm going to do this two more times, but this time I'm going to type in 25% horizontal and 25% vertical. So now I'm going to start placing some of the drawings that I've already made for my mandala. Now I've just made some digital drawings and then I've saved them as a PNG so that they do not have a background. So I'm going to go to File, Place, and this is a coffee themed mandala. So I have a coffee pot here and then I also have a thermos. You can, um, I would say, use three images for this. I'm just going, going to be using two. And then we're also using a custom paintbrush that we created. Whenever you size anything, scale anything up or down, make sure you hold the shift key and you pull from the corner to make sure that you don't lose your proportion. So now that I have these two images on there, I am going to start forming my mandala. And the way that we're going to do this is we are going to work just in this upper left quadrant of our document because we want to create something that will duplicate out and rotate around to make a radial design. So I am going to position these different elements in a way that kind of creates a curve here in this upper left corner. Now in order to do that I want to make sure that my snap is checked and that it is checked to snap to guides, which it is. If yours is not, just make sure that you have that checked before you get started. So now I'm going to go to my move tool here and I'm going to position this thermos. If I click here, I can get into this larger bounding box and I'm going to pull it until it snaps down to my guide. And then I can use my arrow key to make sure that those um, those little black boxes in the center here of the bounding box, that those are right on this guide, on this dividing guide. Um, if you want to size it up, you can do that. You can do hold down your shift key, size it up, and then you'll probably need to reposition it then to get it back into the right spot. Once you're happy with that, you can hit return. Then we're going to duplicate this, and we can do that two ways. You can either do a control click or right click on the layer and then duplicate layer. Or the way that I like to do it, if you hover over with your move tool and hold down your option or alt key until you see the double arrows, you can click and drag out a copy of that. Simple as that. So now I'm going to rotate this. And when I rotate this, I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I get a perfect 90 degree angle. And there we go. And then I'm going to move it down to this guide until that snaps into place. And you can see that a uh, blue guide turns red when that snaps where it needs to be and then I can use my arrow keys to make sure that those two middle black dots are lining up on that guide. Now at this point if I want to continue duplicating these I can totally do that and then position them wherever would make the most sense design wise here. So I'm going to snap that right to that guide and now you can see this kind of forms an arc of these different thermoses. Now I could continue that on, I could do some more of these, but I'm going to start doing that a little bit here with the coffee pot too. So with this coffee pot, maybe I rotate that around here 45 degrees. That's looking pretty good. And then I could duplicate this and maybe I'll oops, not do that. Maybe I'll create some different coffee pots here. Oops. 
And again, I'm holding down my shift key so I can get those perfect angles as I'm lining these up. And at this point, I'm just kind of eyeballing, and that's really fine. It's really these edge pieces that you want to make sure are, are perfectly aligned there. So now I have a bunch of my images. Now I can add a word, and we're going to add a word to our mandala that kind of goes with our theme. But you don't want it to be too obvious. I don't want it to say coffee. Um, so for my word, I'm going to say percolate. And I'm going to select that. And now if I go up to the top, I can see this T with the swoosh underneath it. And that is my warp text box. So if I click on that, have my text highlighted, I can go in here and I can choose a warp style. So maybe I choose the flag. You can adjust any of the uh, distortion on this, horizontal or vertical. And if you're happy with what you see, you can hit OK. Now, I can go and go back to my Move tool, and I can duplicate this. And then I'm going to flip this around 90, 90 degrees. And I'm holding my Shift key to make sure that that gets turned 90 degrees. Now, you can position your words any way you like. You, don't, you do not have to flip them. But try to create a little design out of them. So here I'm kind of creating this percolate into kind of a swooshy design, if that makes sense. And then um, once you're happy with that, we're going to take both of these and merge these layers together. So to do that, go over here to your layers, hold your shift key down, select both of those layers, control click and we'll rasterize the type first, and then we'll control click and merge those layers together. Now once these have been merged, you can, if you want to, double click and add a stroke to this and you can adjust the color on that if we want to kind of match some of the colors that are in our mandala we can use our eyedropper to grab some of those and you can even size this up a bit so it just kind of creates a little bit of a background there you could also take the opacity down a little bit if you'd like all right so once we have that we can start positioning this so we can kind of move it back over here to the corner I'm going to pull this layer up to the very top so that I can see the word and then holding down the shift key, I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees, and then I'm going to decrease it, scale it down. So again, remember every time you scale, you want to use your shift key and pull from the corner so that you don't, do not lose proportion. Now with this, you may want to kind of tweak it a little bit because even though it's at 45 degrees because you've got these going different directions it might align a little differently so kind of look at where it's aligning on the grid that you've made and if you see that it's aligning generally in the same spot so this this little uh, end of the P is aligning right here then that's probably going to be fine okay the last thing that we're going to do I'm going to hit return to set that in there and then the last thing that we're going to do is go down to the background and I'm going to create a new layer on top. So Command Shift N, Return. And I have created a custom brush. So I'm going to go into my brushes and use this coffee bean brush. Now before you do this, you want to go into your brush window and you can access that by going to Window and Brush. And I'm going to make sure that my spacing is spaced out so I can see all the coffee beans. Um, I could adjust the shape dynamics if I want to. I can scatter these out a little bit. I am going to take my roundness jitter down and my angle jitter down a little bit, but I'm going to keep the size jitter and I'm going to space uh, scatter these out a little bit. I've got my opacity set to a low opacity. I've got a brown color which will work for a coffee bean. And in this new layer, I'm just going to start painting in some coffee beans. And then maybe, you know, I could try a higher opacity, maybe a slightly different size, and paint over the top again. Then I'm going to take that layer, and I'm going to position it in the corner. So the important thing with this is the way it looks in this grid. So you're not really worried about how it looks outside of that. And when you're happy with it, you can hit return. So now that we have that set in the grid, now we can start creating our mandala. So we're going to take all of our layers except for a background layer, hold the shift key down if you click on your layer right above the background, and then hold the shift key and click on the top layer, and then control click and merge all of those layers together. Now we're going to go to our marquee tool, and I'm going to hover outside of this corner, hold the shift key down, click and drag until our marquee snaps right to those guides. So we want to have this perfect square right here. So let go when you get there. 
and then do a Command C and then Command Shift V to paste in place. Now, if you'll notice, we have our percolate copy and I'm gonna turn the uh, visibility off on that. You just click the little eyeball to do that. And now you can see I have a copy that's been perfectly cropped by doing that Command C and Command Shift V. So now I'm going to do that again. I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked in this copy. Command C, Command Shift V. Go to my Move tool here. Hover outside until I get my rotation uh, cursor here. Hold down to the Shift key. Rotate that perfectly. Keep the shift key held, and now with your cursor, just move this over until it snaps into place. Hit return to set, and then do that again. Command shift V. We're gonna rotate it all the way around this time. And then with the shift key held down, we're gonna pull it down and then across until that just snaps into place. Hit return to set. Command shift V again, rotate it. And then pull that down. So that's looking pretty good. That's a very uh, circular radial mandala at this point. Now I'm going to double click on the background and I am going to, whoops, oh, I need to hit return to set that. Double click on the background and we're going to set this to layer zero to um, unlock this background. And then I'm going to add a gradient on here. So I'm going to double click do a gradient overlay. Right now we've got this linear gradient, which looks pretty good, but the best gradient for this is a radial gradient. So in style, choose radial. And then we can actually click on the gradient itself and we get this pop-up menu. And with that, we can go through and change some of the gradients that we're using. So let me kind of decrease, or maybe not. I'll just kind of move this out of the way. So as we're um, going through here, you can see as I change these gradients, it has a different look. Now, if you want to change the colors in the gradient too, I could go in, let's say I choose this gradient here with two colors, but I'm not crazy about those colors. I can go in and reset these colors just by clicking on these little tabs. So if I click on this tab here, I could go in and maybe I choose a green from my original thermos here. And then I can go out to the end and maybe choose kind of like a gray, maybe a lighter gray here. And that's looking pretty good. So that's really it. And then when you're done and you would like to see this without the guides, do a command colon. And now you can see that as it's finished. Um, to save this, you can just save it as a JPEG and then submit it on Canvas. So good luck with your mandala project.